Once upon a time, there was a squid, and the squid's name was Lee. Lee was happy. They had a family, a nice pond, and plenty of room to explore. However, they'd been swimming the same banks their whole life, so whether it was running from axolotls, having fun with friends, or trying to avoid the shallow banks, they'd been in the same pond. And while it was a large pond, at least they'd been told, they really have nothing to compare it to, there was a worry in the back of their mind that something bigger awaited them, that destiny shone in that luminous world right on the other side of the shore, that there was a role for them on the surface. That was their dream. Maybe if they would just take a quick peek at the other side. Okay, maybe that wasn't the right way to accomplish their dream. Lee had mentioned their goal to their friends before, and they had been so supportive, right until the moment they said it took place outside of the pond. And while they knew it was a bit far-reaching, it still hurt that they didn't believe in them. Why couldn't they be the first to live on the surface? Lee had been dreaming for what felt like forever and was almost convinced it would never come to fruition. Until one day, when they were exploring their favorite bank that had the best view of the light and overheard the elders discussing the universe. How everyone was important. Everything, the other corrected. And how the universe has power, they said. And we have power, they said. Lee felt for the first time like their dreams were within reach. As the other squids swam off, Lee moved to follow, but they felt their heart sink as they heard their conversation had moved to a new topic. And as riveting Lee was sure their favorite kind of current to swim through was, it didn't connect the dots, and it didn't give Lee the instructions they were hoping for. Lee had never exactly been a philosopher. No squid had. There was no need. Why philosophize on what ifs when life just is? So when they went to think about what they'd learned, Lee was scared that they would be laughed at even more. It was that mix of fear and need for enlightenment that churned in them as they drifted to sleep that night. And as they slept, which for them and all squids, was typically a thoughtless and uneventful thing, they dreamt. Not of pictures or of themselves on the shore, but of squiggles, strange markings that scrolled through their mind and somehow made sense. This one is aware. They can see us. In a sense, they're watching now. I see. And they're still dreaming? In more ways than one. Perhaps we should give them a chance. Chances aren't nearly as balanced as one thinks. True. But we aren't guaranteeing fairness. Simply offering a choice. Very well. We can give them a role. They are strong. They are tenacious. They are protective. There is a role that needs filled and they could fit it nicely. How do we let them choose? Perhaps a leap of faith? A way to make sure they really want to give up the life they have now. How about a real leap of faith? I see what you mean. Very well. They will have a day to make the jump. If they do, a new life awaits. If they don't, then they are none the worse off. And if they fail in their task, I suppose they will have consequences. What would that be? One that befits the failure. Do you think they'll remember this? Yes, they are strong. Just watch. You have the choice. Wake up. Lee drifted along the current, feeling the most conflicted they had in a long time. They could feel anticipation and anxiety building, but they weren't sure what the reason was. They knew something needed to be done, but couldn't think of what. As the day passed by, they asked everyone they saw if today was special. Everyone gave the same answer. As special as any other day. Maybe they couldn't feel it. Maybe they couldn't sense it. Lee found themselves swimming towards their cove closest to the shore. They thought back to the day they accidentally beached themselves and felt something new when reminiscing. No longer did they feel embarrassed and ridiculous, but felt like a trailblazer, an innovator, and they knew what had to be done. And for the first time in a long time, they had faith. And so they leapt. The sun was so warm, not nearly as scorching as they remembered, 
and the air was so cool. Why did they remember it as a gusting void? And they felt weightless until they hit the sand. And it all came back. The baking heat, the suffocating wind, the crushing gravity, the withering sand. Lee was in pain, but somehow still held out hope. They'd been so sure this was the right thing to do. And so, while the relentlessly objective sky pressed into this relentlessly optimistic squid, the world remained the same. The grass was not moved by the touching display of heart. The trees cared not for the squid's eagerness for more. The mountains stared down on them with an impartial gaze. To any outsider looking in, it would seem like the universe did not care. But Lee knew better. And right when they couldn't take the harsh heat of their dreams anymore, the world shifted. They took a breath, and then another. Their eyes adjusted and the heat lessened. The sand didn't stick quite so bad and the sky didn't push quite as hard. They took a tentative step forward, and then another. And the squid felt such euphoria that they spun in the bright of the day and danced on the dehydrated earth. But just as their celebration began, it ended. There was a honing in their mind, a task that needed to be completed, and they knew where they needed to go. And so they began their march. Across forests and swamps and plains, they didn't stop once to take in the sights, as they wouldn't be able to rest until they laid eyes on their goal. When they were finally tired enough to collapse, they spied what they knew in their heart to be their new home. A glorious gateway shimmered before them, its color one Lee had never experienced before, and the doorway radiated an ambiance that felt right, but like the threshold should never be crossed. They knew in their heart that their role was that of a protector, and not of an adventurer. This was a door they should never go through. Lee took their job very seriously. They watched mobs, passive and hostile alike, warily, daring them silently to come closer. They never did. Lee no longer needed to sleep, and spent their restless days standing a silent vigil with only the humming from the portal to entertain them. They didn't mind, though. It was what they'd wanted. A job. A role. So they waited. And waited. And waited. Days passed. The sun rose and fell, and rose and fell, and rose and fell until they no longer counted the rotations. It was in this blur that Lee's focus no longer remained on the gateway. And so, under their care, the gateway began to decay. The first block fell and startled them out of their days that they'd been in for too long. Lee turned with dread to look upon their charge. While it was missing a corner, the portal still hummed, though a bit more weak than before. Lee didn't know how to fix it. They didn't even know where to start. They picked up the fallen piece and held it close, hoping desperately that an idea would strike them, that some kind of thought would inspire them enough to find a way to repair it. They spent their time thinking hard, thinking how to replace the block. It was challenging enough to just hold the piece, let alone trying to piece it back together. Lee was almost certain that that wasn't in their job description. Lee was just a protector, a guardian, not a maintenance worker, right? So they held the piece and continued to guard. Things went back to normal. Lee would watch the portal lovingly and glare at any creature that would cross their line of sight. Day would rise, night would fall, and so on. The days blurred together again, and right as they felt comfortable that the decay had been a fluke, another block toppled down next to them. Lee scrambled to pick up the next piece. What was happening? Why was this happening? As they pondered these strange happenings, Lee failed to notice an approaching entity. They were thinking so hard that they didn't even notice it get close enough to place a block of its own and take its lead. When Lee finally snapped out of the stupor, their eyes landed on the new block with confusion. Where did this box come from? They approached slowly and looked inside. Just some random junk. But there looked to be some more room. Lee considered. These blocks were heavy. And them holding the pieces weren't going to fix the portal any more than the box sitting in the box would. So they placed the pieces inside. A fine solution, they thought to themselves. 
if not a temporary one. Something would come along that could fix their problem soon. They could feel it. So they waited. And waited. And then heard a terrible shattering. Lee turned in horror to find their beloved doorway had lost its shine. It no longer sang to them. A third block laid on the ground. They hurriedly added it to the chest. What to do? This was unrecoverable. Placing blocks is one thing, but creating a portal? That was another. Lee's thoughts drifted with a feeling of disappointment and dread. They had failed. And for the first time since rising to land, they dreamt. It's them. Looks like we were wrong again. This one wasn't the one. They feel disappointed. They shouldn't. They did their best. It wasn't enough. No, but it was their best. So what do we do? We told them there would be consequences. Indeed. I guess the same thing we always do. Have them spend eternity in the realm they swore to protect. Very well. You did your best. The universe is proud of you. Wake up. Over here. Hiya. Cool story, huh? If you enjoyed this production, it would help a lot if you made sure that you were subscribed to the channel. It's completely free and it really helps me out. Make sure to comment other mobs or achievements that you think need mythology. Bye!